Hello and welcome to a tutorial to set up an online shop with Dreamweaver and PHP. This is chapter number 10 and we're going to talk a little about styles and form protection so that um, so the people sending their personal information and data fill in compulsory fields. You will see it's very easy with Dreamweaver. Well, the first thing we're going to do is the design stuff. As you know, these last years the, the design is being managed via CSS files. We've got a CSS file here in the style folder. We've got CSS file. CSS file has got three main keys. There are three ways to introduce attributes or categories, so to say. Uh, the first one would be using the HTML attributes, which are the keywords or the key HTML labels. The second one would be using classes, as this one for example with a dot before it and the last one would be using identificators the difference between classes and identificators is that the identificator can only be once per page and the class can be associated to more places okay so this is basically for the didactic purpose <coughs> this is not a CSS course so we will go over it just a little <coughs> to do so what I will do first is uh, I will keep this page open to see how it was before and how changes will work so I copy paste the URL here the first thing we will do is opening the template and we're going to add a heading with an image and here if you remember in base admin <coughs> which is where we have the main template inside header I will enter an image so we go to insert image I already prepared an image here, but you can make your own one. This one is El Charco Shoes. I accept. In alternative text, I write administration, but well, at an administration level, we don't need mm, so many things, only for the positioning. Okay, we got it. Now, when I save this template, it's going to ask me if I want it to update all the files when I update the template. I will say yes. So I save with Control S, and as you can see, it asks me all the pages I've made up in some way. It tells me, hey, you've got modified the template. Should I apply that modification to these files? I will answer yes to it. Process the stuff, and there we got it. That on one side. Uh, let's see how it looks like by now. <coughs> I update and you see it has placed the image there and all the pages are in its place product list etc next thing we're going to do is deleting this horrible green thing here and adjust a little the general font type so to say for it we go to the CSS file and we go to the body inside this body we're going to delete all the information related to the text and we will just leave a margin zero and padding zero which would initially be interesting depending on your version of the program this might be seen a different way though but initially the body we double click here and in type we choose uh, Tahoma for example size 12 in a color other than black uh, uh, gray for example and I save it I save it and check the page and as you can see the visualization has improved quite a lot let's delete this green thing here which looks horrible and I'm going to set the background to the whole web for you to appreciate the change first thing we have to do is to detect um, imagine we don't know where does this green color come from or we don't know where to find it to do so both Internet Explorer and Firefox as well as Chrome uh, have a very good application called Firebug in Firefox and which is embedded in Internet Explorer if if we press F12 you see a new window appears down here if I press this arrow pointer you see it selects each of the different areas in the page right they can be layers cells text areas etc so if I click here trying to find out what is this green thing the program tells me div class header and here on the right it gives me the attributes working on that area here it's very clear that the background color is a 93 which must be some kind of green color to check this we just click this and you see we could leave it blank so to say or delete this line so we will go to header which is on this file the only one we've got so far let's look for header around here and here it is let's change it to a white color 
six or three efforts as you please a save and now go to the page I close this I can do it also with F12 I update and you see this is much more elegant okay next thing to do would be creating a background image um, inside the body for example in the background label we're going to select a background image which would be uh, courses PNG this is a vertical image which is a blue gradient of one pixel wide and 4,000 pixels high this will be good for this reason we're going to ask the program to repeat the background image towards the X that is to right considering that the X is to the right and the Y is downwards we click accept as you can see it fills in all the necessary code I save and go back to the page and do you see how nice this is far more elegant than before let's do a last thing or, or else a couple of things so that this tutorial doesn't get too long it would be changing the color of this bar here or, or even the font type its size and color we're going to do it in a very easy way with class we're going to add a class here in the end which will be called dot and uh, for example main table we open and close square brackets and automatically when we update this we will get it here now here in text transform we choose uppercase to turn all the types into capital letters also I want the letters to be white and the background to be blue let's choose a blue which is more or less similar to the background we had so that it's a consistent design I'm not very good at picking colors but <laughs> this one for example okay so this background color we accept as you can see it fills up the code they save and for this to work we have to go to the page products list we're going to open it here admin products list I'm going to split this to see it this way and right here in this TR uh, we're going to add a class equal and main table it already appears here this is how it appears on the right side why does it still appear in orange if I chose blue well have a look these cells still have the original orange color code we put by hand now it is in blue it looks cuter though <laughs> though it isn't the cutest blue in the world yeah. and the following thing we can do which is very beautiful and very visual is the thing that uh, when we move the moves mouse over the products it, it shines so that we know which one we're choosing so we will make a class that will be called <coughs> will be called uh, shine I save it I will tell it that shine has got a yellow background this one for example but shine shine is a class that will be applied by means of a subclass called hover with hover what we will do is telling it I want you to apply this class when the mouse pointer is on the object they tell you so we mark this and go to the products list and inside the TR we enter class as you see most of it appears here and shine I save and although here it seems nothing has happened I go to navigator update and you can see what a great effect it creates so that when this is full of products I will know which one I am choosing in each moment <coughs> It's beautiful it's easy and maybe with other colors it would be even better but that goes with each one's taste and for you to see what what has been the change from the previous patch to this one look at it was before and how it's now <coughs> it has improved quite a lot it can improve even more but that's not the point of this specific course as it's knowing all the things you can do and then go there in depth okay the next thing I'd like to explain you not to make this video too long is how to make these fields compulsory <coughs> I put <coughs> I put this asterisk before you can do it too in fact let's open the page impact product tab <coughs> here I just uh, did an asterisk after each field right <coughs> 
how can we do that when I click on insert product you see it includes me a product but as I didn't write any information there is a blank item this cannot be done if I hit add product at least I want the product to have at least a name a placing name and a price so we will use the sprite a little of Ajax and some JavaScript which is very easy to handle to do so we click on the field we want to be compulsory we go to the sprite label <coughs> We've got it up here and we click on Sprite Validation Text Field. When we click here, we get a new type of code. Here it is Sprite Text Field. How do we select here what is going to happen with this text? Well, down here it's ticket as compulsory, you can do plenty of things with it, even check if it's an email or so. But by now I will do it the simple way. I will select this one too and say it's also an sprite and the same with the price field. What's gonna happen here? It's very easy. First we're going to save and the problem will tell me hey I need you to put the sprite sets folder. Uh, oh, I'm going to delete it because I already had it. <coughs> you didn't have it, now it will create it and me too. When I save this, it will tell me, let's save, and this is what it was telling you. It didn't appear because I had done it before. It's telling me, I need these two files to work properly. Sprite assets, Sprite validation text fields, CSS, and JS. In the CSS, there are the styles, and the JS is the JavaScript management. For this to work properly, <coughs> I click Upset for it to create them inside the new folder that will be around here. Here it is, here it is, Sprite sets, and inside it, the CSS and JS files. To tell the truth, I mistreated Dreamweaver quite a little. That's why I thought they had created them, but I hadn't. Uh, well, okay, my mistake, never mind. The important thing is we're going ahead. Let's go to the product ADD, which is, as we have them, admin, product add, that's it. Okay, here we are. Now we update here the add product page and when we hit it insert product now you will see the fields automatically appear in red with the text below. Hey, I need the value to work. So I enter here whatever and the same in the positioning and the fields in green will be okay. But this one is still blinking in red thanks to the Ajax and the JavaScript which are very, very interesting programs. Okay, this text of value needed can be changed, although we don't see it in the right side, it appears on the code. <coughs> for example, for example, I like writing here uh, necessary, necessary here, and uh, necessary here as well. I save, and now to make it even better, I go to the CSS in the Sprite Assets folder and it tells me this border one pixel solid appearing here I don't quite like this red color surrounding the text so I will comment it not to break anything I will comment it, save it and when I update you see it's a little smarter uh, it's up to you if you prefer this text on the right you just have to open the table and well in order not to make this much longer, I will see you on chapter chapter 11. And, well, you know, you can ask me any doubt you may have, be it in the forum, be it in the video comments, as you please. I hope you like this and I wait for your comments. Regards.